It happened in Iceland on Friday, March 19, 2021, at 8.45 p.m., about 20 miles southwest of the capital. Molten rock suddenly burst through the surface from below. Bright lava fountains then lit up the night sky. A volcano in this valley finally woke up after almost 800 years of sleeping soundly. We divide volcanoes into three categories – active, dormant, or extinct. Around 1,900 of them around the globe are considered active. That means they've erupted in the recent past and will likely do it again in the possible near future. Dormant volcanoes haven't popped off for a long time, but they still may in the future. You could say they're sort of sleeping. As for extinct ones, those guys haven't done anything in more than a million years. The eruption in Iceland wasn't super explosive, and this all happened 6 miles from the nearest town. So everyone was perfectly safe. Many even came to see it up close. While other brave visitors tried to fry eggs and bacon on the lava. Just be careful not to burn your breakfast black. Lava can be over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It burns everything in its path. Yet it also produces some of the most fertile land for agriculture. This eruption gave a relatively small amount of lava at first. But it's been spreading across the valley in different directions, forming a sort of shield that's constantly growing. You can never really predict how fast a lava flow will be until you see it. It all depends on how thick it is and how steep the mountain slope. Lava can ooze slowly at about 20 feet a minute, a fraction of the average person's walking speed. Or it can flow as fast as 30 miles per hour, which even the fastest person on Earth can't outrun. But the lava isn't even the most dangerous thing about volcanoes. That would be the toxic gases spewing from the eruption and those spread faster and further than the lava flow. Luckily, in Iceland's case, the wind has been blowing these gases away from residential areas. Scientists weren't surprised this volcano erupted. They knew it was coming. Increasingly stronger earthquakes had been shaking this area for the past 15 months. There were 50,000 earthquakes within just the three weeks leading up to the eruption. That's 100 per hour. The volcano has been active since March, and geologists say this could last for weeks, months, years, or even decades of constant eruptions in the area. Mount Shasta is in the top 5 most dangerous volcanoes in the US, so geologists are keeping a close eye on it. The last eruption was in 1250. I wasn't around then, but this volcano erupts every 600 to 800 years. Which means, tick-tock, we're due any day now. About an hour from Portland, Oregon, there's an active volcano that last erupted in the 19th century. Next time it goes off, scientists think it'll produce larger amounts of ash and dust. This could cause an electrical blackout and make water unsafe to drink in the area. But the experts pay close attention to Mount Hood. They'll be able to give plenty of warning so people can react in time. Kilauea is one of the most active volcanoes in the world. It's been erupting almost constantly since 1983, making it also one of the longest eruptions known on Earth. It's the youngest land volcano in Hawaii. Volcanoes can take thousands of years to form, but others can pop up practically overnight. A volcano in Mexico just erupted in an open field in 1943 and started growing from there. Within a year, it was almost 1,500 feet tall. When the eruptions finally stopped nine years later, the mount had reached a height of over 9,200 feet. Mount Fuji is an iconic symbol of Japan. The last time it erupted was in 1707, and it sent a shower of burning rocks as far as 60 miles away. If a similar eruption happened today, Tokyo would be within that vicinity. Mount Fuji is right on the Ring of Fire, that horseshoe-shaped region in the Pacific Ocean full of active volcanoes and earthquakes. From one end to the other, it's almost 25,000 miles long. It could wrap all the way around the Earth's equator. In January 2020, a tall volcano in the Philippines started spewing lava, sending huge plumes of ash half a mile up into the sky. 
The eruption even triggered a rare phenomenon, a dirty thunderstorm. That's when the smoke cloud above a volcano produces its own lightning. The chance of volcanic tsunamis was also high. Those are usually caused by tectonic movements that occur because of volcanic activity. Tall has erupted more than 30 times in the last 450 years. This volcano in Ecuador last erupted in 2016. Scientists think it might be showing some early warning signs of magma on the move. This is an active stratovolcano, a specific cone-shaped type with steep sides. They form from sticky lava that doesn't flow that easily. That lava goes around the vent, cooling and piling on itself to form these steep walls. These types are more likely to produce explosive eruptions like the ones we see in movies. Ruapehu is the oldest national park in New Zealand, a volcanic wonderland where you can closely see all those steaming craters, magnificent lakes, and unusual rock formations. It last erupted in 2007 and has had 10 eruptions since the mid-19th century. But eruptions, lava flows, and toxic gases aren't the only danger coming from volcanoes. There's also a thing called lahar, a kind of volcanic mud flow of debris. In between eruptions, snow melts and a lake forms in the caldera. If the last eruption brought mud, ash, and rocks in the lake, it becomes dangerously full. In that case, only a temporary dam holds it back. Indonesia has the biggest number of active volcanoes in the world, including one called Anak Krakatoa. It means child of Krakatoa, and its famous parent isn't far away. A huge tsunami in 2018 partially woke Junior, a scary thought since Senior had one of the most powerful eruptions ever seen on this planet in 1883. Krakatoa's boom was the loudest sound ever heard. People over 2,000 miles away could hear the explosion. The sound wave circled the globe seven times. And scientists say it's hard to predict this volcano's eruption patterns. Mount Yasur in Vanuatu is one of just a few volcanoes in the world where you can see a lava lake. Tourists even go there to peer over the edge and get a look at the burning, bubbling lake below. Well, except for when the volcanic activity goes to levels 3 and 4 out of 5, that means there are more intense earthquakes, volcanic tremors, or steam, gas, or ash ejections. Then this place is off-limits because, duh! This volcano in the DR Congo has the most active and largest lake volcano in the world. And all that lava is unusually fluid meaning it travels faster and further than the stuff coming out of most volcanoes. It's certainly not amongst the tallest ones, but Ethiopia's Erta Ali is unique in that it has a lava lake almost constantly, which is pretty rare. The locals call it a smoking mountain because its lava lake often causes eruptions. This volcano is near the Danakil Depression, one of the hottest places on our planet. Marupi has been erupting on a regular basis since the mid-16th century. This volcano helps scientists do crucial research on how eruptions work and how they can warn people in time. After it was dormant for a while, this volcano in central Mexico sprang back to life in 1994. Ever since then, it's been producing huge mud flows and strong explosions in unpredictable intervals. In the past, enormous eruptions coming from this giant buried entire cities in pyramids. Imagine staying in a hotel and waking up to the magnificent view of a massive volcano covered in glowing rivers of lava and clouds of ash. When it lets off heat, visitors to this area in Guatemala take a chance to roast some marshmallows there. One of the most active volcanoes on Earth is on a small island north of Sicily. Stromboli has regular explosions, together with glowing lava coming from vents inside the crater. Not too far away is Etna, Europe's most active volcano and one of the biggest continental ones in the world. By the way, Earth definitely isn't the only planet with volcanoes. The largest one in our solar system is on Mars. It would cover the entire state of Arizona, and it rises nearly three times higher than Mount Everest. Ooh, don't look down. 
You put on a diving suit and a warm coat on top. Sunglasses? Check. Umbrella? Right there! You run out of the house, and your friend drops you a pair of skis and a picnic basket you forgot to pack. You've traveled all the way to Estonia to experience its mysterious fifth season, and you gotta be prepared for anything. Every year between winter and spring, you can see this unique natural show in Suma National Park. The entire park disappears under the water, up to 16 feet of it. The locals travel over the swamp meadows and around submerged houses, sunken apple orchards, and raised bog islands in canoes. When the water level is especially high, they even rode through the window into the living room. The main roads are overrun, and half of the people just stay in their homes for up to four weeks until it's gone. No one knows exactly when the fifth season will arrive. It happens somewhere between March and April and attracts many tourists to the area. They're here to see the flooded land and local fauna like common cranes, nesting swans, and raccoon dogs stranded on aspen, birch, and beech branches. Lynx, wolf, and brown bear leave the area long before the floods get there. This territory was once a seabed formed 12,000 years ago during the last ice age. As the glaciers were retreating, they left a great depression that turned into one of the largest peat bog systems in Europe. It's a huge natural sponge. The park lies low on the western slopes of the Sakla uplands. The rivers in the area cannot cope with the upcoming snow that moves down from the mountains after the winter. Many small streams unite into one gigantic flood. Some experts believe floods can appear at more unusual times in the future. So, Estonia could also have a sixth season at some point. Dalo in Ethiopia is the hottest inhabited place on Earth year-round. The average annual temperature is 105 degrees, and the hottest month has an average high of 116. The place has hardly any rainfall and is also one of the lowest on the planet. It lies in the Donakil Depression with some unique geology. It developed after Africa and Asia had moved apart a long, long time ago. You can see volcanoes and bubbling lava lakes, bright yellow, orange, and green hot springs, and huge salt pans. A village in the Meghalaya state of India is known as the wettest place on the planet, according to the Guinness World Records. The average annual rainfall here is about 470 inches. It's a result of warm, moist monsoon winds coming from the Bay of Bengal, bringing clouds full of rain. It flows into rivers and waterfalls and never stops. The locals that work in the fields always wear basket-like covers to try to protect themselves somehow. The village of Leknes, with a population of about 3,500, is located in Norway, above the Arctic Circle. It has an unusual warm climate compared to other places in the same latitude. In January, the average minimum is 32 degrees and rarely drops below 30. July average temperature is 53. That's pretty regular for many places in Europe. Melbourne in Australia has normal-seeming temperatures and a nice coastal climate. But in the spring months, it has the most changeable weather you could imagine. The temperature can drop from hot to shivering in one minute. You could leave the house at 9 a.m. under the sun and get soaked by midday. Then you'll put on your shades again while recovering from hail and thunderstorm all on one day. It is due to the city's geographical location, close to the mountains, and the cold coming in from the Southern Ocean. Cape Denison in the Commonwealth Bay in Antarctica is the windiest place on the planet. It has unusual downslope winds. They're formed because of the continent's dome shape and the always cold climate. These winds are so fast and strong, they ruin the measuring instruments and the mass they are attached to. The record speed, so far, was 200 miles per hour. The Sahara Desert that takes up 10% of the African continent is extremely hot and dry. That's why it's one of the top places with the clearest skies. There's hardly ever a cloud above it. This, plus the remoteness from any civilization, makes it one of the best spots for stargazing. The cleanest air in the world is over the Southern Ocean near Antarctica. It's so clear, scientists could barely find any DNA to analyze in it, except for some marine bacteria. Antarctica itself is 99% ice and has mind-blowing blue glaciers, active volcanoes, and the best views of crispy, clean snow in the world. Markansu Valley, high up in the Pamir Mountains, is a record holder for the number of dust whirlwinds. The lifeless valley is covered with a thin layer of sand and pebbles with black stones below it. 
It heats up during the day, and when strong cold winds race through it in the afternoons, the dust rises. The winds often get as strong as tornadoes and can lift a heavily loaded camel. Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela is often called the lightning capital of the world. Thunderstorms arise here 300 days of the year, with a peak in September. Sometimes there are up to 200 flashes in a minute. It happens because cool air coming from the surrounding Andes meets with warm air from the Caribbean Sea and generates electricity. Some places on Earth have less gravity than others. Canada's Hudson Bay, for example, used to be covered by a super-thick and heavy glacier during the last ice age. The ice had pushed tons of rock mass outward when it started to melt. The smaller the mass of an object, the less gravity it has. It'll take another 5,000 years for the Earth to get into its original shape in this spot. Until then, you'll always weigh less here than anywhere else in the world. Once a year, for just a few moments, a waterfall in Yosemite turns into a firefall. In the winter and early spring, when there has been enough snow and rain, two streams flow down the big granite El Capitan. The skies clear up. The sun is hiding behind the horizon. At some exact point, it gets in the right position to reflect off the wall and color the water fiery orange like lava. Mount Haleakala in Hawaii is one of the quietest spots on Earth. National park rangers nearly fail to find any sounds to measure their loudness here. The place translates from Hawaiian as House of the Sun. It formed thanks to a volcano that was active 1 million years ago. The lava flows build up over the years and grew into a mountain. It has its own climate and weather that's impossible to predict. One of the most unique natural optical illusions on Earth is an underwater waterfall off the coast of Mauritius. No worries, the island isn't going under. Sand is moving through the underwater currents into the darker deep ocean and creates the illusion. The shelf here is 10 times deeper than the rest of the surrounding waters. One of the driest places on Earth, Chile's Atacama Desert, turns into a garden every 5 to 7 years. When there's enough rainfall between September and November, super bloom spreads overnight. The seeds of over 200 types of flowers sleep in the ground for months or years, waiting for that water to help them sprout. Five Flower Lake in China's Jiaxiagu Valley changes its color from amber yellow to emerald green, dark jade to light turquoise, and sometimes coral. It never freezes, thanks to underwater hot springs, and never melts or dries up unlike other neighboring lakes. The locals believe it's made up of pieces of a mirror that fell from the sky. Marble caves in Chile are one of the most isolated natural wonders of the world. They're a group of black and white caverns, columns, and tunnels made of marble. The waves have been shaping them over the last 6,000 years, and the process is still going on. They make a great show, reflecting light into the perfectly turquoise water. An enchanted river in the Philippines jungle seems to pop out of nowhere. It's a short stretch of salt water flowing into the Pacific Ocean. It most likely comes from an underground cave system free of any dirt. That's why the river is so impeccably clean and seems super deep with all the possible shades of blue. Local legend says that fairies added some sapphire and jade to it. Hey, it could happen. The Spotted Lake in Canada looks like any other regular lake in winter and spring. In the summer, the water fades and leaves hundreds of huge mineral pools behind. The yellow, green, and blue polka dot pattern is made of minerals like calcium and sodium sulfates that run off the hills. Each pool has a unique color, depending on the concentration of minerals. Visitors aren't allowed to get close to the lake, which is probably a safe thing. You step on the surface of the moon. It's unusual. You definitely feel lighter here, and it's easier to walk. You decide to check out that obsessive idea of yours. Jump on Earth's natural satellite. And even despite your bulky spacesuit, you literally fly up into the air. Woohoo! Anyway, you continue your walk on the surface of the moon when you feel something strange. The ground under your feet is… is it shaking? It feels as if an earthquake has just started on the moon. But that's simply impossible. Or is it? Surprisingly, your gut feeling hasn't let you down this time. Moonquakes do exist. In fact, there are four types of moonquakes that are strong enough to be detected from a large distance. There are deep moonquakes occurring more than 430 miles below the surface. 
Then there are meteoroid impacts. Thermoquakes occur when the frigid lunar crust expands. It happens when the morning sun illuminates the satellite after a two-week-long deep freeze lunar night. And there are also shallow moonquakes. They're the only ones that are similar to earthquakes on our planet. Shallow moonquakes happen 12 to 19 miles below the surface, and they're the most powerful and dangerous. Between 1972 and 1977, the Apollo Seismic Network recorded 28 such moonquakes, and some of them measured more than 5 on the Richter scale. On Earth, such an earthquake is strong enough to crack plaster and move heavy furniture. Plus, shallow moonquakes are very long-lasting in compared to earthquakes. Once they get going, they can continue for up to 10 minutes. As for the average earthquake, it typically continues for 10 to 30 seconds. Scientists are still not sure what causes shallow moonquakes, and even where exactly they occur. One of the theories is that moonquakes happen at the rims of large, relatively young craters that probably slump from time to time. Interestingly, the Moon and Earth aren't the only places where earthquakes occur. No, scientists have recorded quakes, tremors, vibrations, and shakes in other regions of our solar system, too. Let's take Mercury, for example. A few years ago, scientists discovered that this planet was shrinking, and that's why it seems to be so tectonically active. Or Venus. This world is a tectonic puzzle for experts. At the moment, Venus has no tectonic plates, and it might have never had them. But its surface has folds and faults and looks as if it could have tectonic plates. On the other hand, these features might have appeared because of other processes, for example, volcanic activity. But even though we haven't observed any Venus quakes, scientists believe they could detect them since their vibration seems to ripple through the thick atmosphere of the planet. Now, Mars. We know for sure that this planet is seismically active. NASA's lander placed a seismometer on the surface of the red planet, and in 2019, it managed to measure its first Mars quake. After that, the lander continued to record quakes. But they were so weak that if they happened on our planet, they'd be completely covered by the background noise of Earth's oceans. But a space body doesn't have to be a full-fledged planet to have active tectonics. Let's take Pluto. This dwarf planet is geologically active at the moment. In 2014, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft was flying through the Pluto system when it recorded complex geological features on this dwarf planet. Scientists concluded that Pluto might have quakes, or should I call them Pluto quakes, when its liquid water ocean freezes and thaws beneath the dwarf planet's icy crust. Jupiter's moons Europa and Io, as well as Saturn's moons Titan and Enceladus, are also geologically active despite their small size. Their features range from volcanoes and water plumes to potential subsurface oceans. Now, I bet you don't know these cool facts about earthquakes that occur on our planet. There's one place on Earth where a whopping 90% of all earthquakes occur. It's called the Ring of Fire, and it stretches around the Pacific Ocean from New Zealand all the way to South America. Hmm, looks to me more like a horseshoe. Anyway. Experts claim that these countless earthquakes are caused by the abundance of volcanoes in that region and the constant movement of the tectonic plates. Around half a million earthquakes happen on Earth every year, but many of them occur very, very deep in the Earth's crust, and only special equipment can detect them. We feel around 20% of earthquakes, and only 100 of them can cause damage. The largest recorded earthquake occurred in Chile in May 1960. It was a magnitude 9.5 on the Richter scale. It was truly devastating. During that earthquake, seismographs detected and recorded seismic waves that traveled all over the world. They shook the planet for many days. As for the most powerful earthquake that occurred in the U.S., it was 9.2 and happened in Alaska. By the way, Alaska, along with California, is the most earthquake-prone state in the U.S. and one of the most seismically active regions in the world. A magnitude 7 earthquake occurs there almost every year. A mega-earthquake can actually shorten the length of a day for the entire planet. NASA claims that really large earthquakes can shift our planet's axis and, thus, change the duration of a day. Now, of course, you won't notice it since this change is measured in microseconds, and one microsecond is one millionth of a second. Scientists think that the 9.1 Sumatra earthquake, which occurred in 2004, 
shortened the day by 6.8 microseconds. Now, not even the best specialists can predict an earthquake. That's mostly because the mechanisms that trigger earthquakes are extremely deep underground. But these days, people have learned how to figure out a more precise time frame of when an earthquake might occur. Earthquakes can be triggered by volcanic eruptions or, let's say, meteor impacts. But most of them are caused by the movements of our planet's tectonic plates. Earth's surface consists of 15 to 20 constantly moving tectonic plates. Pressure increases when they shift, and this can make the crust of our planet break. San Francisco is moving toward Los Angeles right at this moment. The speed of its movement is about 2 inches per year. That's as fast as your fingernails grow. It's happening because the two sides of the San Andreas Fault, which is the continental fault extending 750 miles through California, are slipping past each other. So, in several million years, Los Angeles and San Francisco will be neighbors. Lakes, ponds, and canals become slightly warmer and start to stink before an earthquake. It happens because gases get released when tectonic plates shift. Most animals feel these signs and change their behavior. For example, scientists noted toads completely disappearing before an earthquake in Italy in 2009. But as soon as the natural disaster was over, they returned. Even after an earthquake is over, you might still see water sloshing around in your swimming pool. There's no need to worry. This is a phenomenon called a seiche. The water can keep sloshing around for hours after the earthquake is over. For example, the pool at the University of Arizona lost some water from a seiche caused by an earthquake in Mexico that occurred 1,200 miles away. On February 27, 2010, a massive earthquake started in Chile. It measured 8.8 on the Richter scale. As a result, Earth's crust in that region was ripped so dramatically that a city called Concepcion moved 10 feet to the west. Another earthquake resulted in the tallest mountain in the world, Everest, shrinking by one inch. It happened in 2015 when a magnitude 7.5 earthquake caused several Himalayan mountains to decrease in size. The Japanese used to believe that earthquakes were caused by Namazu, a giant catfish that lived submerged in the mud under the Japanese islands. The fish would thrash about, causing seismic activity. As for the ancient Greeks, they were sure that a powerful sea deity, Poseidon, produced earthquakes by hitting his trident against the earth when he was angry. According to Hindu mythology, eight elephants hold earth in place. They are, in turn, balanced on the back of a ginormous turtle, standing on the coils of an even larger snake. And every time any of these animals moves, an earthquake occurs. An earthquake in Indonesia began in 1829 and lasted a mighty 32 years. It reached its climax in 1861 and hit a magnitude of around 8.5. It was caused by the tectonic plates below the island slowly clashing against each other. Researchers discovered that the quake had been building for some time after analyzing the coral in the area. They found it was being periodically exposed to the open air. That was caused by the gradual earthquake moving the land up and down. Scientists call these decades-long silent earthquakes slow slip events. A single lightning bolt can warm the air to around 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat makes the air expand quickly, creating a shock wave or boom, which we know to be thunder. There are close to 3 trillion trees on Earth. That translates to roughly around 422 trees for every person. Before humans, the number was nearer to 6 trillion. Almost 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water which on average is around 2.5 miles deep. 97% of Earth's volcanoes lie underwater, as well as the Mid-Ocean Ridge, a massive mountain range that is over 40,000 miles long. Humans have mined around 190,000 tons of gold from the planet. Experts predict there is around 20% still left to be mined, but this figure is constantly changing. The world's largest active volcano is in Hawaii. Called Mauna Loa, it's over 2.5 miles above sea level. Given that most of it is underwater, 
the volcano's summit is a staggering 11 miles from its base. That's the same length as over 160 football fields. The highest ever recorded temperature on Earth was a sweltering 136 degrees Fahrenheit. It was recorded in El Azizia, or modern-day Libya, on September 13, 1922. The lowest temperature was a chilling minus 129 degrees Fahrenheit, recorded at Russia's Vostok station in 1983. Earth is the fifth largest planet in the solar system, behind Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. It has a circumference of roughly 25,000 miles, and it would take the average person around 8,300 hours to walk around the face of the Earth. The separation between Earth's land masses would make such a trek almost impossible, though. It takes 365.25 days for the Earth to orbit the Sun. Because our calendar years only have 365 days, we add an extra leap day every four years to make up for the difference. Russia is the largest country on the planet, with a total area of about 6.5 million square miles. It encompasses more than one-eighth of the Earth's inhabited land area, but still has a relatively small population given its size. Earth is the only planet with one moon. Mercury and Venus have no moons, while every other planet has two or more. Earth is over 4 billion years old. Scientists calculate this by looking at the planet's oldest rocks, as well as meteorites that have crash-landed. They used meteorites as they were formed at the same time as Earth, when the solar system was forming. The ground we walk on is basically recycled. The planet's rock cycle turns igneous rocks to sedimentary ones, then transforms those into metamorphic rocks and back again. Like Earth, our Moon also experiences earthquakes. They're less common and intense than the ones we have and are caused by tidal stresses. A tidal stress is basically the relationship between the gravitational pull of the Moon on the Earth and that of the Earth on the Moon. Despite being the fifth largest continent, Antarctica holds 70% of the planet's fresh water and about 90% of its ice. Bangkok is the most visited city in the world, boasting 23 million visitors in 2019 alone. Paris, London, Dubai, and Singapore make up the other cities in the top five. The lowest layer of Earth's atmosphere is called the troposphere and is the reason we have weather. Sunlight heats the planet's surface, which causes warm air to rise up to the troposphere. This air then expands and cools as the air pressure decreases and sinks down where it is then warmed by the Earth again. Coral reefs are the largest living structures on the planet, with some even being visible from space. Coral reefs hold the most species per area of any of Earth's ecosystems, even more than rainforests. Earth got its name around 1,000 years ago, and it comes from the German word, meaning the ground. But there's no evidence to show who actually named it. Of all the planets, Earth is also the only one which is not named after a Greek or Roman deity. The deepest point of the ocean is the Mariana Trench. It's a whopping 7 miles below sea level. Coastlines cover about 20% of U.S. land, but are home to more than 50% of the U.S. population. The Earth isn't actually a sphere. It's more like a squished ball that bulges at the equator. The bulge is caused by the force of the Earth spinning, which makes the North and South Poles slightly flat. The Earth spins on its axis, which is basically an imaginary straight line. Earth has seasons because the axis is tilted causing the sun's rays to hit different parts of the planet more directly, depending on the time of year. If the sun was as tall as a standard door, the Earth would be around the size of a nickel. The Earth's rate of rotation is gradually decreasing. It's happening so slowly that it would take as much as 140 million years for the length of a day to increase to 25 hours. Get equipped for any season with brand new Brightside merch. Click the link and grab your print. The biggest animal on Earth is the Antarctic blue whale. It can reach lengths of 100 feet and weigh up to 400,000 pounds, which is around the same as 33 elephants. The temperature at the center of the Earth 
is around the same as the surface of the Sun, at almost 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Earth is around 10,000 times older than humans. Earth is around 4.5 billion years old, whereas humans have been around for, at most, 450,000 years. There are around 34,000 known species of fish. The actual number is way higher, though, as a whopping 95% of our oceans still haven't been explored. America's Route 66 is longer than the journey to the Earth's core. The distance to the core is roughly 2,000 miles. Route 66 is almost 2,500 miles. The Earth is made up of three main components, the crust, the mantle, and the core, which is divided into the outer core and the inner core. Scientists have estimated that there are around 8.7 million species on the planet. Out of this, between 1 to 2 million of these species are animals. But roughly 86% of land species and 91% of fish have yet to be discovered by humans. Ancient astronomers used to think that the Earth was the center of the universe. For 2,000 years, they believed the Earth to be static, while other bodies traveled in orbit around us. In 1543, Copernicus published his sun-centered model of the solar system. Earth is the densest planet in the solar system. The density varies across its different crusts, but the planet's average density is just over 3 ounces per cubic inch. Mount Everest is the highest point on the planet. Its peak is the highest altitude above sea level, at around 5.5 miles. Each year, one septillion crystals of snow fall on Earth. That's a trillion trillion snowflakes. Snow covers about 31% of Earth's land area each year. Of Earth's water, only around 3% is fresh water. The other 97% is salted. Of that 3%, about 2% is frozen in ice and glaciers. So, less than 1% of the planet's fresh water is actually in lakes, rivers, and underground. The world's largest inland body of water, or lake to us normal people, is the Caspian Sea. It has an area of 140,000 miles squared. The world's deepest lake is Lake Baikal in Russia and is 5,300 feet deep. Earth's atmosphere is roughly 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen, with small amounts of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other gases. No other planet is believed to have this much oxygen, which explains why Earth is the only planet where life has been discovered so far. Apart from the Moon, there are two asteroids in co-orbital orbits with Earth. Sometimes called Earth's second moon, 3753 Kruthni is an asteroid that looks like it's following the Earth in orbit, but it's actually following its own path around the Sun. 2002 AA29 is another asteroid which makes a horseshoe orbit around the Earth that draws it close to the planet every 95 years. You have friends over for dinner. You set your drink on the counter and go help your friend set out some desserts. When you get back, you notice the liquid in your cup. It's sloshing around and the ice cubes look like ships on a rough sea. Now you feel it too. On the ceiling, the chandelier is swinging like mad. Then you hear someone scream, earthquake! The house and everything in it is rocking back and forth. You try to run for cover, but the shaking keeps you stuck in place, fighting to keep your balance. The cabinets look possessed, and glasses and dishes fly out and smash on the floor. The bookshelves topple over, and everything hanging on the walls sways and falls off. You duck under the dining room table, trying not to get hurt on all those broken dishes. Yeah, you've been through earthquakes before, but none like this. Checking your phone? Eh, typical, no signal. You can't believe what's about to happen. The screams get louder, and suddenly, the whole house collapses. The biggest earthquake ever recorded happened in Chile in 1960. Disaster came in the afternoon, just when everyone was out enjoying themselves. To cause serious, life-changing damage, you need to have a magnitude of around 7 or so on the Richter scale. This one was 9.5. This part of Chile is smack dab on the so-called Ring of Fire, the most active volcanic and seismic area in the world along the Pacific Rim. The initial shaking lasted around 10 minutes, and after two days, many aftershocks were still strong enough to set off a volcano in the south of the country. But that's not where it ended. 
The earthquake unleashed a series of tidal waves all over the Pacific Ocean, with some reaching over 80 feet high. The waves and earthquake were so strong that they even affected Hawaii, Japan, and the Philippines. It caused around a half a billion $1960 worth of damage. Many were left homeless. Much of their infrastructure was smashed too. Buildings as far as the eye could see were toppled, and debris piled everywhere. Scientists estimate that this earthquake was so powerful, it shifted the Earth's axis, making our days 1.26 microseconds shorter. That might not seem like a lot, but think about it. Just one natural disaster was strong enough to make time move. Many of the coastal cities were flattened and floods were widespread. The economy spiraled downward. According to studies, if this earthquake happened today, it caused more than $20 billion in damages. So what would happen if an earthquake twice that size hit without warning? For starters, you'd likely feel the effects even further away. Tidal waves wouldn't just hit the coasts of Japan and the Philippines. They would move even further to China, Korea, Vietnam, and even Australia. And those waves would be significantly higher than 80 feet. Perhaps double that. That's like eight giraffes piled on top of each other, surfing your way. If you lived by the coast, you'd notice the waves. If you saw the water recede way back, so you could practically see where all the fish call home, you'd know it was time to run. Chances are that a tsunami's heading your way. Say it really happens. You're caught under the wreckage, not knowing what's going on. You manage to free yourself and escape to the fresh air. And you're not alone, because all the houses in the neighborhood have turned into piles of bricks and rubble. The bridges have also collapsed, leaving people stranded on either side. You look around, dust yourself off, and rush to find help. Fire trucks and ambulances drive between the broken-down cars and rubble. You try to make it to your car, but the aftershocks are still hitting, and you're getting tossed to the sidewalk. With all the cell towers down, you can't call anyone on your phone. Your knees are shaking, but you manage to power through. Once you reach your car, you see it crushed under a boulder, like a giant soda can. You continue on foot and eventually reach downtown. It looks as if some giant got angry and knocked all the buildings down. You push forward and try to see if you can find some help. Without warning, your phone vibrates. You check it and see a thousand notifications about a 20-magnitude earthquake. You're still shaking, but that's all you. The ground is still for now. Uh Uh-oh. You hear something in the distance, racing towards you. To your right, you see tidal waves as tall as buildings charging at you. Still in shock, not knowing what to do, you now come to your senses and run. You don't even know which way to go. There's a tsunami right behind you, and in front of you are broken down buildings, with rocks and concrete still falling everywhere. Wait, there's a building that's somehow still standing. You need to get on top of that thing. You reach the elevator, but it's jammed. Not surprising. You bolt up the stairs as fast as you can, tripping on broken glass and plaster, but always managing to get back up. You look out a window and see the water. It's so close. You're nearly at the top. A few more flights and... Whoosh! The water forces its way into the building and drags you down at least two floors. You can barely see anything. Still, you know you must swim up. But the water keeps forcing you downwards. After about 30 seconds, you manage to swim your way out and continue climbing to the top. You scramble to the top floor and collapse on the roof. You're safe for now. The tidal wave is still going strong, plowing its way through the ravaged city center. Your phone is now waterlogged and useless. You have a perfect 360-degree view of your town covered in water and debris. The ground starts to shake again. Maybe you'll just sit around until this is all over, waiting for the rescue helicopter. But then, a loud explosion that almost breaks your eardrums shakes the ground even more. Off in the distance, smoke is rising, and soon it covers the entire sky. Darkness hides the morning sun. That's when you can see lava shooting up into the air and landing nearby. The lava forms into a river, flowing its way into town, block by block. 
With this much seismic movement and the high intensity of the earthquake, the world's tectonic plates have shifted so that magma is pushing its way to the surface. From the Earth, steam begins to vent. Then the heat hits you. You see the magma cover the ground like a blanket, eating up every car in its way. What's worse is that the magma is melting the foundations of the buildings that managed to withstand the earthquake and the tsunami. The buildings in the distance are now sinking and collapsing into the raging lava pool that's replaced your town. One by one, every building descends. That means, uh uh-oh, the building where you're standing is also swaying. It's about to fail. That's when you see the light. You look up and see a helicopter above in the distance. You wave your arms, run around, jump, anything to get noticed. And it works. The chopper makes a few circles and finally drops you a rope ladder. As you're lifted in the chopper, you take a good look at the world below you as it wriggles around like noodles in a strainer. You land a few miles out and are immediately treated by a doctor in an emergency triage center. You were one of the lucky ones. A year later, the tsunami water has receded. The lava that flowed inland has cooled. But all that magma permanently changed the ground below it. And the whole town is gone. The disaster has thrown the entire country into a financial nightmare that'll last decades. It takes months to survey the town, making sure there's no dangerous electrical wires or busted gas pipes anywhere. They're rebuilding your town farther inland from where the old one was. In other towns, they rebuild directly over the ruins. In others, they just decide to move everyone to a nearby city. You're hiking in the wilderness, looking for a safe spot to set up camp. All you can hear are leaves and branches crackling under your footsteps. Some squirrels are running up a tree over there. But suddenly, something unexpected happens. You notice something weird in the distance in between the trees. It kind of looks like a concrete structure of some kind. Weird. At this point, you're at least 20 miles deep into the woods, and there are no nearby towns or villages, as far as you know. So you decide to go off the trail with your friends to get a closer look. But as you get nearer, you realize that it's leading to nowhere. Hmm, what's it doing here, in the middle of literally nowhere? And it doesn't even lead to anything. You put on your Sherlock Holmes cap and investigate. So, maybe there used to be an old house or mansion here that collapsed over the years, and the only thing left is a staircase? But, weirdly enough, after circling the bizarre structure, you realize there's no trace of any ruins or even foundations. It's like someone just sliced a staircase off their house, cake style, and plopped it here for no reason. Okay? You and your friends aren't really into getting a whole lot closer. Something feels wrong. The longer you look at this weird structure, the more you feel a super creepy presence. Something tells you you should probably leave the area as fast as possible. As weird as this sounds, discoveries of random staircases illogically found in the woods are surprisingly common. Some are made of wood, others of brick or stone. Some look ancient, while others look like they were finished yesterday. The one thing they all have in common, they all lead to absolutely nowhere, and they're all found in super mysterious locations. One of the most famous ones is in Chesterfield, New Hampshire. A long, medieval-looking staircase made of stones with Roman arches in the middle of the woods. It's believed to have been part of Madame Antoinette Sherry's castle. She was a big singer back in Paris. The castle dates back about 100 years, and it was later discovered again in 1962. This time, there was nothing but a staircase. Another mysterious ancient staircase dates back to 9,000 years ago. It's in a forest in Italy. It looks like a series of stairs that lead to a tiny platform at the top. Now, why go through all the trouble of building the thing if it leads to nowhere? Well, some scientists think it could have been some sort of ritual tower. But your guess is as good as theirs. There's an anomaly in the Indian Ocean known as the Indian Ocean Geoid Low, or IOGL. It produces the largest distorting natural gravitational force in the world. 
Heavy mineral deposits, many deep-sea trenches, and magma reservoirs disturb the magnetic field in this area. Earth's gravity changes in different places around the planet. It allows researchers to look for patterns and figure out what's happening beneath the surface. Higher gravity fields usually mean denser materials below and vice versa. Some scientists believe that the anomaly might be a dent in the planet's mantle that is working its way up to the crust. The Nihau Island actually rejects the fruits of today's advancements. There are no cars in sight since the locals get around on foot or by bicycles. No wonder their legs have great definition. They thrive without running water, internet, or shops. The only school on the entire island is powered by solar energy with a backup generator. And what's awesome is that it's the only school in the state that's powered by the sun. Being a resident of the island, the local explains some ground rules the permanent residents must abide by. If they do break these rules, they can be evicted. Now, not far from Bangkok, in northeastern Thailand, there's a 75-million-year-old rock formation. These rocks look like three whales swimming together. The beautiful design created by nature became known as Three Whales Rock. Millions of years ago, this area was just a desert. But the land was changing. Gradually, sandstone got pulled apart by the movements of tectonic plates and erosion. That's how these spectacular formations were created. If you decide to explore the system of trails around Three Whales Rock, you'll find waterfalls and an abundance of fauna and flora there. Located on Gamal and Gaiden peninsulas, these expansive pit holes were discovered in 2014. They seem to be still changing and evolving. The pits grow wider, and people find them more often. Of course, there's no shortage of theories about how they appeared. Suggestions range from meteorite impacts to the activity of other civilizations. But the most common explanation is that methane gas reacted to water molecules after the planet's permafrost started to melt. This resulted in bubbles of methane bursting through the ice. The craters could be thousands of years old, but nobody knows for sure. You're driving to the state of New Mexico, to the small town of Taos. 2% of the locals hear a strange buzzing in the air every day. Some residents believe the sound is somehow connected with technologies used by guests from other galaxies. Ooh. Also, there is a theory that something sinister lives in the town. They say Taos is cursed. An evil spirit or a phantom punishes people for something their ancestors did in the past. Scientists still can't explain the nature of this sound. Another theory says it's caused by unusual acoustics of the location, while others think the buzzing is a hallucination. Some can hear it because everybody talks about something, and our minds create an illusion of the sound that doesn't really exist. The sound isn't the same for everyone, either. For some, it's a low hum. For others, it's more of a buzzing sound. But this is not the only place where you can hear the strange noises. It's called the hum, and people worldwide claim to have heard it. Some dwellers of a small village in Scotland describe it as a low, thick hum. Well, some residents of Florida heard a similar sound, too. It's not exactly known where this phenomenon appeared. But the first time the media started talking about it was in the 1970s in England. Also, there are written records of a mysterious buzzing dating back almost 200 years. According to some estimates, only about 2% of people on the planet can hear the hum. Perhaps their ears pick up some low-frequency waves, or the reason is something else entirely. Maybe, just maybe, they hear humming because the person doing it doesn't know the words to the song. Yeah, that joke is also 200 years old. A volcano in Indonesia spews bright blue lava and produces electric blue and purple flames. This phenomenon occurs because the volcano has some of the highest levels of sulfur in the world. You can also know you're near it by its foul stench. But I digress. And when sulfuric gases interact with scorching hot air and get lit by the molten lava, they turn blue. You can also find the world's largest acid lake inside this crater. Yep, it's a real stinker. Underwater rivers and lakes are called brine pools for a reason. 
high salinity makes the water in them denser than the seawater around. That's why it sinks to the bottom, forming rivers and lakes. Those have waves of their own, and these waves can sometimes lap up against the shorelines. If you went down there in the submarine, it would easily float on the surface of a brine pool. But without a submarine, swimming in such a lake would be too risky. They contain too much toxic methane and hydrogen sulfide. Yeah, I'd pass on that too. But hey, be my guest! Cave of Crystals in Mexico is home to the world's most unique crystal formations. Thanks to super-rare conditions in the cave, crystals there grow to unbelievable sizes. The air inside is incredibly humid. The water contains tons of minerals that boost the growth of the Milky White Giants. Some of them are longer than telephone poles. Cylindrical snow donuts occur when a wind gust starts to roll some snow across a snowy area, as if making a snowball. If it was a real thing, it would eventually become too heavy for the wind to move. But a snow donut's center is hollowed out. This happens because its inner layer is too thin and is blown away when the donut is formed. This makes the thing lighter than a snowball. That's also why it rolls further. Unfortunately, snow donuts are rare because they need very precise conditions to appear. The Danakil Depression in Ethiopia is probably one of the most bizarre-looking places you'll ever see. It's dotted with neon-colored hot springs, lava pools, and vast salt flats. You've got to be especially careful there. Toxic gases are swirling over hydrothermal fields, and many pools are super acidic. So, mm, don't go swimming. Until at least 30 minutes after lunch. (laughs) Just kidding. And finally, there's nothing mysterious about 28,000 rubber ducks found in the sea in 1992. That's when a ship transporting bath toys got lost in the ocean while traveling from Hong Kong to the U.S. Some of these ducks are still floating in the ocean several decades later. They've been spotted in South America, Alaska, Hawaii, and even Australia. And they make bath time lots of fun. Ooh, rubber ducky! Now picture this, you're watching a volcano erupt, which is a scary view by itself. But suddenly, you notice ominous bright flashes lighting up the sky over the volcano. It takes the nightmarishness of the experience to a whole new level! One causes static electricity, which occurs when dense ash particles rub together not very high above the ground. The other source of volcanic lightning is high above the surface, near the stratosphere, where chaotically moving ice crystals set free powerful jolts. Salar del Uni feels like you're standing on top of a large mirror, but it's actually a salt flat of more than 4,000 square miles. It's located in Bolivia, South America's highest elevated country. This natural mirror is a remnant of prehistoric lakes that had evaporated a long time ago. Even though it may look flat, GPS technology proved that some of the landscape has some little defaults that are all less than an inch small. The place is so bogged that it has around 10 billion tons of salt. If you get there at the right time, some of the nearby lakes overflow with a small layer of water, which acts as the mirror of the sky. Many locals extract salt and lithium from there. Don't forget to pass by the world's first salt hotel when you visit. You can find a real rainbow mountain in Peru. Scientists still can't explain it. The colorful peak is hard to reach, but seeing the blue, red, green, yellow, and pink colors in nature is something to remember. Now, what looks like frozen flying saucers is, in fact, pockets of highly flammable and combustible methane gas. Trapped underwater, it forms psychedelic landscapes and stunning patterns. Typical for northern lakes, such as Lake Abraham in Alberta, Canada, these bubbles appear when dead animals, leaves, and plants fall into the water and get consumed by bacteria. These bacteria later excrete methane gas. Wow, I can smell it from here! In late March 2018, Eastern Europe witnessed an event as beautiful as it was spooky. Skiers glided down tangerine slopes under the red-tinted sky. Puzzled and excited, people describe this experience as walking on Mars or skiing down sand dunes. But however mysterious this phenomenon seems, it has a disappointingly simple explanation. 
the sponsor of the extraterrestrial landscape, was a powerful sandstorm that had arrived from the Sahara Desert. This storm had brought along dust, sand, and pollen particles that colored the snow orange. It's not a one-time natural phenomenon. Meteorologists say that orange snow covers the lands of Eastern Europe at least once every five years. Meanwhile, don't eat the orange snow. On February 20th and 21st of 2018, people in the northeastern part of the U.S. experienced one of the most extraordinary weather events of recent times, and it was a heat wave. Yep, in February. In fact, it was the most impressive winter heat wave since official weather records started in the 1800s. For example, in Freiburg, Maine, people were taking off their coats after the temperature had risen to a baffling 70 degrees Fahrenheit. In Fitchburg, Massachusetts, confused people put on sandals when they saw the temperature outside 80 degrees. The same was happening in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where the temperature reached 83, and in Wells, Maine, where the thermometer showed 77 degrees. Now, around 11,000 years ago, in present-day Turkey, with no cities or metal tools whatsoever, some incredibly skilled craftsmen completed Gobekli Tepe, how they managed to chip and lift limestone blocks three times as heavy as a T-Rex, and what they symbolize is still unknown. Ooh. One mind-blowing fact about Devil's Tower in Wyoming, USA, is that scientists can't explain how it came to existence in the first place. You see, it's an 867-foot rock formation with walls so steep they're basically vertical. This piece of stone just arose amid the rolling plains of Wyoming with nothing like it for miles and miles around. So how is it that such a flat landscape could have suddenly given birth to something so tall? Theories abound, but nobody has the answer yet. Croatia's Plitvica Lakes National Park is a major tourist attraction and a world heritage site, with many unique animals and plants teeming around. It looks like an epic movie set, with infinite waterfalls flowing from every direction and the clear lakes all around. In the mid-1980s, a scuba diver discovered the Yanaguni Monument off the coast of Japan. Scientists are positive this collection of structures is thousands of years old, but they still can't decide if it's natural or man-made. In case it proves to be an ancient city, the new mystery is what lost civilization built it and how did it make it to the bottom of the sea? The shape and formations of these rocks aren't a result of some human's work. They were created by intense volcanic eruptions. Scientists are still confused why the Giant's Causeway in Ireland is shaped in such a weird way. Back in 1812, for an unknown reason, an English farmer paid a local painter to remove tons of soil on a hillside and fill the contours with chalk. The painter ran away with the money, so the farmer had to pay a second time to get the Alton Barn's white horse finished. Black Falls in Iceland get their name from the dark lava columns surrounding it. The base of the waterfall has sharp rocks. The entire structure was the inspiration for Icelandic architecture seen in some of their famous buildings. You can see hair ice in the forest on a humid winter night. Resembling cotton candy or a white hair wig, unusual ice crystals grow on rotting wood. Unfortunately, this beauty melts as soon as the sun comes up. Only recently have scientists discovered what creates hair ice. All this time it was, are you ready? Fungus. Yep. It allows the ice to form super thin hairs and helps them to support this form throughout the night. When this particular type of fungus isn't present, instead of fragile hair, ice forms a crust-like structure. Now, one of the most common causes of wildfires is lightning from thunderstorms. But have you ever heard of a wildfire that triggered a thunderstorm? Well, now you know. It happened on May 11, 2018, not far from Amarillo, Texas. Then, the super-powerful Mallard Fire not only created a massive dense cloud high in the air, its heat also caused a violent thunderstorm that later dumped tons of quarter-sized hailstones 60 miles away in Wheeler County, Texas. Carhenge is the weirdest landmark of Nebraska. Its author studied the real Stonehenge and created his own version out of old cars as a tribute to his father. Some cars stand like monoliths. Others are connected into arches. 
When asked why he did all this, the creator of the construction said, why not? Another Stonehenge lookalike was found on the bottom of Lake Michigan in 2007. There's a group of rocks in a circle and carvings of a mastodon. This beast ceased existing over 10,000 years ago, so the carving has to be older than that. Its location is kept secret from the public. Good luck finding it! Canada's Hudson Bay is probably the only place in the world where gravity is indeed lower than anywhere else on the planet. Even skeptics can't smirk at it because the difference has been measured with precision equipment. So does it mean that the gravity here is as low as, say, on the moon? Eh, unfortunately, or is it luckily, I'm not sure yet. The difference is minuscule. The exact value is 0.005 or 1 200th of a percent. You won't be able to feel it even if you try your hardest, but it's still there. Scientists say this anomaly exists because of the ice sheet that covered the area about 10,000 years ago. It compressed the rocks so much that they still can't fully recover, shifting the gravitational field in Hudson Bay. Sometime in the future, though, the gravity will return to normal in this area as well. In 2010, fossilized fish were uncovered 250 miles west of the Nile River, where the Sahara Desert was as arid as ever. This chance finding led scientists to believe there could have been a sea where the Sierra is now. So they conducted a geological survey of the area, and it yielded unexpected results. They found evidence of something huge under the sands, and it wasn't part of any sea at all. For several months, the research continued with GPS equipment on land, and later, when all the ground data was collected, scientists took a look at the area from a satellite. The view was astounding. It turned out there was an enormous basin underneath the desert, with another, smaller one nearby. Along the shores of these basins, ancient human settlements had been found previously, and now the researchers finally had the answer as to why exactly they had chosen those spots to live. There had been a lake of impressive proportions, over 42,000 square miles of fresh water in total, about half the size of Lake Michigan. Hey, ever heard of a fire rainbow? Yeah, me neither. How about a circumhorizontal arc? Didn't think so, but just so you know, they're one and the same thing. At first glance, it looks like a painting, or like a rainbow-colored splash in the sky. Despite the name, they have nothing in common with either fire or rain. This phenomenon happens on rare occasions when the sun shines through a particular type of ice cloud formation. The rainbow halos are just as unique. Again, a specific type of ice crystals and clouds needs to be present for the surface of the Earth to bend light from the sun into a perfect ring. The same thing can happen with moonlight. The only difference will be that moon halos are usually white and sun halos can be rainbow-colored. When visiting regions with high altitudes, you may be one of the lucky people to stumble upon penitentes. They're basically naturally formed ice spikes. For them to be formed, they need a really cold and elevated environment where the air is dry. The sunlight turns ice directly into vapor rather than melting it into water. And that's why these blades of snow and ice start to pop up on the surface of the Earth. As cute as they may be, they can end up as tall as 15 feet. Now, what happens when small individual droplets of lava meet the wind? Pele's hair, basically. Let me explain. The word Pele comes from an ancient Hawaiian symbol for volcanoes. Whenever the wind picks up little drops of lava, it stretches them into hair-like strands, similar to the process of glass wire creation. These delicate strands can stretch as far as 6 feet. On rare occasions, it can rain without any clouds. But does it really? Let's look at the science behind this rare phenomenon. It's sometimes called a sun shower, just because it looks like the rain is falling straight from the sun. Let's be clear though, there is no way rain can ever come down directly from a star. Rain clouds are at a bit of a distance from that specific location. With sun rays being angled, the clouds become out of sight. Add a little wind to blow the rain in your direction, and ta-da! You get sun showers. Located in Bolivia is a place called Salar de Uni. It's the largest salt flat in the world. 
It's also the home of half of the world's lithium, which is a crucial component for making batteries. But what else is so special about this place? Well, whenever the rain season comes, it turns this piece of flat land into a perfectly reflective mirror lake. What comes to your mind when you hear about the Blood Falls? A horror movie? (laughs) Well, they are merely a series of waterfalls located in one of the driest regions of Antarctica. They emerge from an underground lake filled with a special kind of bacteria. These little organisms use sulfates as fuel instead of sugars, which makes them very intriguing for scientists. The water contained in this lake is so full of iron that it basically just rusts when it meets the air. Hence, the reddish color of the waterfall, which also gives it its trademark name. Okay, we all know the song, but it's not really made up. There is actually such a thing called a desert rose. It's not a plant, though, but a unique form of the mineral gypsum. It develops in dry sandy places that can occasionally flood. This constant switching between a wet and dry environment lets the gypsum crystals emerge between grains of sand trapping them and forming a rose-like shape. Ever heard of the Eye of Sahara? Scientists are still trying to figure out how it was formed. You can only see it if you fly above it, but it's basically a naturally formed dome that dates back to approximately 100 million years ago. And no, I wasn't around then. It has a rough diameter of 25 miles and consists of a bunch of concentric rings. The biggest one, or the central area, measures about 19 miles in diameter. Astronauts were some of the first people to notice it, and it's been studied ever since. In fact, even to this day, when landing in Florida, they know they're almost home when they see the Eye of Sahara. One of the most beautifully colored trees in the world is located in the Philippines and Indonesia. It's called the Rainbow Eucalyptus. It got its name because of its bark that switches colors and peels away as the tree ages. The bright green bark is the youngest, as it contains a substance called chlorophyll, usually found in leaves. It then switches to purple and then to the color red. And finally, it turns brown as it grows and loses the chlorophyll. Now, don't be tricked into thinking that's a whole forest. It's one single tree. And no, it's not some sort of optical illusion either. Let me explain. Underneath that soil, there is a complex network of roots that connects around 47,000 tree-like shapes you see above the ground. It's called the quaking aspen. Some of these trees are among the oldest and largest organisms in the world. Now, here's a good destination for all travelers, or maybe not so good after all. The most lightning-stricken area in the world, according to recent data released by NASA, is Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. Out of all the days in a year, 300 of them feature thunderstorms in this location. What makes this area so unique, though, that storms happen so often? Well, it's because where cool mountain air meets the warm, moist breeze and generates electricity over the lake. The Eternal Flame Falls are located in upstate New York, near the Canadian border. In this region, there is a tiny waterfall with a big secret, a spark about 8 inches tall. Turns out there's a natural gas seat that provides fuel to the flame behind the waterfall. The waterfall provides enough coverage so that it stays lit pretty much every time. Hikers do enjoy to relight it if they see that it's been blown out. This phenomenon is actually quite common, but this one gained more popularity because it is younger than most. And it looks very good in pictures, let's be honest. I've heard of yellow sand, white sand, and even black sand here or there. But I've never heard of green beaches until now. Papacolia also known as Green Sand Beach, is located in Hawaii and is one of the few beaches in the world that features green sand. The unique coloring comes from olivine rock that was formed when a nearby volcano erupted. Actually, in Hawaii, all the volcanoes are nearby. Move over green sands because some of the other beaches around the world can even glow at night. And it's completely natural. The culprit? A little thing called photoplankton or microalgae, as they're sometimes called. They're basically little plants that contain chlorophyll and need sunlight in order to live and grow. Most photoplankton kinds are able to float in the upper part of the ocean, where the sunlight can still reach them beneath the water. 
when the photoplankton gets agitated by the movement of waves and currents, they emit light, which looks like some glow during the night. These special microorganisms are found on beaches in a lot of places around the world, such as the Maldives, Puerto Rico, and the Everglades. At the base of a mountain located just outside of Afton, Wyoming, is a little river called the Intermittent Spring. There are only three of this kind in the whole world, but what makes this little string of water so mysterious? Well, the fact that it starts and stops every few minutes. Scientists have yet to pinpoint precisely why this happens. They speculate that it's basically just a siphon effect that happens deep within the ground that causes the river to just start and stop so often. Should you ever be interested in checking it out, be sure to do so in the late summer, as that's when the intermittent spring is most active. Do you see the irony here? You can only see the spring in the summer? Okay, I'm done. You're in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile, one of the driest places on Earth. But this desert has a beautiful secret. Every three to five years, flowers pop up out of nowhere. It's so famous, it's also called the flowering desert. Seeds lie around in the ground just waiting for some rain. When the desert gets enough water, about 200 types of flowers sprout up. The yellow sands of the Atacama turn purple, white, green, and even pink. Another mystical phenomenon that can be seen in the desert is called a sand waterfall. When the wind brings a lot of sand to the edge of the canyon, it begins to fall down. Now amplify this effect 100 times and you get a sand waterfall in Saudi Arabia. It really is like Niagara Falls, only there's not a drop of water. The locals say this phenomenon warns of an impending sandstorm. Fairy rings, also known as elf rings or pixie rings, are mysterious circles of mushrooms that appear in grasslands and forested areas. There's a lot of debate about why these fairy rings form a nearly perfect circle. Some superstitions claim that fairy dances would burn the ground, causing mushrooms to rapidly grow. In southern India, between July and September 2001, people witnessed one of the strangest weather phenomena in recorded history. The rain was red. What many would have thought to be a typical rainstorm left them shot. The color was bright enough to stain clothes. There were other colors too, such as green, yellow, brown, and even black. In the middle of a monsoon, red rain started to fall, and so did periodically for several weeks. Researchers have found this unusual rain is stained either by dust or algae, so don't try to catch any on your tongue. Scientists aren't entirely sure how the algae got all the way up there. This does make events like this a little unsettling. Now, people who live in rural central Norway over the Hestalen Valley can often witness floating lights of white, yellow, and red cross the sky. The lights appear both at day and night, and once back in the 80s, <clears throat> the 1980s, they were spotted 15 to 20 times in a single week. The Hestalen lights can last just a few seconds, but sometimes they can last more than an hour. The lights move, seeming to float or even sway around. Some scientists believe that the reason for these lights is due to ionized iron dust. Others say it's a combination that includes sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen. Many people claim they're just misidentified aircrafts. Norway! Snow donuts are one of the rarest meteorological sites to see, with perfect weather conditions needed just to create them. Found in any snow-covered mountain area, like the Rocky Mountains, the wind, temperature, snow, ice, and moisture all have to work together for us to see these phenomenal rings. A thin layer of wet snow on the ground. Under that layer, ice or powdered snow. Then, a strong enough breeze to roll the donut down a hill, just like a snowball. Once it stops rolling, it can be the size of a baseball or as large as a car tire. It all depends on how strong the wind is. A newly formed snow donut won't stay around for very long, so hurry up with that camera and watch your head. Can you believe there's another place on Earth with its own ecosystem and atmosphere, similar to another planet? Well, start believing. Movil Cave, located in southeastern Romania, remained closed in complete darkness for a whopping 5.5 million years. It wasn't until workers discovered the cave, when they were looking for a place to build, that anyone learned about it. 
Scientists carved out an opening to the cave and found that a completely sustained ecosystem was thriving inside. As a pathway was carved through the rock past numerous tunnels, scientists found a lake of sulfuric water that stank like rotten eggs. The air was filled with hydrogen sulfide and had 100 times more carbon dioxide than Earth's atmosphere contains. Needless to say, this air is completely toxic. What's even crazier is that a whole ecosystem has been existing in this cave with 33 species that can't be found anywhere else on Earth. This cave gives us a glimpse of what could possibly exist on other planets with completely different atmospheres. How it managed to exist on Earth all this time without anyone knowing is rather unbelievable, isn't it? Now, check these trees out. They're called Indian rubber trees. Their strong roots grow not underground, but on the surface. With the help of special frames and fasteners, people have learned to control how these roots grow. Let's say a tree is next to a small pit. You need to make a bridge from one end of this pit to the other. You direct the growing tree roots in the needed direction. Over time, the roots penetrate the ground and strengthen under endless downpours. It takes about 15 years to create one bridge. Here's another amazing tree called the Tree of Life. It grows in Bahrain's desert. The tree has been standing on top of this sandy hill for more than 400 years, surrounded by miles of sand. It's extremely hot here, and there's no moisture. But despite this, the tree has green leaves, and it continues to grow. So far, scientists haven't figured out yet how the tree gets moisture and nutrients. There are only places with oil deposits around. Locals think the tree is sacred. After all, it demonstrates the magic of life and the power of nature. Some experts are sure it's all about the roots. They go so deep that they can reach underground sources of water. So, there you are. You've been driving for hours through the night. You didn't have any chance to sleep, so your mind is hanging by a thread. You stop the car and go out to stretch your limbs. And then you look up into the sky and see a beautiful sunrise. Whoa, wait. There are three suns in the sky. You rub your eyes, but nope, there's still three bright stars in the sky. No, our home star hasn't been torn into three pieces, nor has it been visited by two other stars. This is called a sun dog. It occurs mostly during severe frosts. Small ice crystals in the sky bend the light. As a result, you may see three bright spots in the sky instead of just one. This phenomenon is officially called a halo. Usually, it's just a circle around the sun. You can even see a halo at night, too. Just look at a street lamp, and you'll see a bright circle around it. Sometimes, a halo can take on a fancier shape. If there's a lot of ice in the air, the light is warped even more. Just like in a room with a dozen mirrors. Then, the halo can take on the shape of a human eye. Because of this phenomenon, a false dawn can also occur. While you're looking at the horizon, the dawn begins, and the edge of the sun appears. A little bit more, and wait, the sun starts to just dissolve in the sky. After a few moments, it's dark again. And only a minute later, the real sun shows its face. It was the same light curvature effect you saw before with the three suns. Only now, the light is curved vertically, not horizontally. And instead of the real sun, its reflection in ice crystals in the sky appeared. But the sunrise with three stars on the horizon is actually real. Not on Earth, though, but 340 light years away. There's a star system at the center of which lurks a star almost twice the size of the sun. And there are two smaller stars orbiting around this giant. This strange world has a planet, too. Sunsets and dawns there really happen with three stars. If you brought your significant other to a park bench to watch a sunset here, your date would go just fine. Whatever that means. And since we're talking about the most baffling natural phenomena, it would be a crime not to mention snow in a desert. Yep, in the winter of 2018, the inhabitants of the Sahara Desert, one of the driest and hottest places on this planet, woke up to discover a thick blanket of snow covering the sand. In some places, the layer of snow enveloping the dunes reached a staggering 15 inches. Meteorologists, however, had an explanation for this exciting phenomenon. 
They stated that cold pools of air, combined with the precipitation from the most recent storm, resulted in a snowfall instead of rain. So, what do you do in that case? Build snow camels? Hmm, one hump or two? You feel some rumbling from below. No, it's not your tummy. It's low and ominous. You look up and see strange lights hanging above the ground. They look like shimmering balls of light hovering high up in the sky. Your throat goes dry, and you gulp. That's what they call the earthquake lights. This phenomenon is poorly understood, but witnesses say they've seen it in different shapes and sizes. It could be in the form of light balls, sheet lightning, streamers, and a steady glow in the sky. Soon after, a strong earthquake follows. Scientists can't explain why those lights appear, and they don't always do either. Some believe that's a reaction of underground gases released into the atmosphere. Sure enough, an earthquake begins. But lucky you, it's not as strong as you expected. The ground is shaking, but you even manage to keep your balance. It stops as abruptly as it began, and you walk home. On the way home, you see a flash and hear a whip crack. Lightning has struck a lone tree near where you just stood. It's caught on fire, and... There's a column of flames rising to the sky. Still no rain, and the pillar becomes taller and taller. Have you heard of such a thing as a fire tornado? These phenomena occur when the wind is caught in a circle close to the ground because of the difference in air pressure. Such mini tornadoes are usually easy to notice. Small rubble, dust, sand, and leaves rise into the air and start flying in rapid circles. But then, if there's a source of fire nearby, The funnel can catch it and blow it stronger, like bellows. The flames go round and round, reaching ever higher and eventually creating a swirling, blazing tower. Luckily, fire tornadoes are short-lived and don't normally cause much damage. But don't try to hide from the storm under that tree. You can find this unusual plant in Florida and in some parts of the Caribbean coast. Externally, it doesn't look special at all. A great trunk, green leaves, and fruit similar to small apples. What you must remember is never to pluck these apples and never stand next to the tree, especially if it's raining. This is the manchineel tree, which is considered the most dangerous in the world. Its trunk, bark, branches, and fruit contain poisonous juice. One drop of this corrosive acidic liquid can harm your skin a lot. The tree can secrete this juice And if you accidentally touch it, you risk burning your hand. When it rains, water droplets fall on the tree and mix with the poison. Water can also bounce off the bark and get on your skin. That's why you shouldn't stand nearby either. There are almost no other shrubs or mushrooms growing around. Animals avoid these trees, and people don't chop them and don't pluck the fruit. You can't make a bonfire from their branches. Burning wood emits poisonous smoke that can damage your eyes. Locals know this tree well, but tourists and travelers might accidentally get harmed. That's why most manchineel trees are marked with paint or have a warning sign. In western Venezuela, locals living close to the Catatumbo River aren't afraid of lightning because they see it almost every single night. It starts at around 7 o'clock and doesn't stop until dawn. The everlasting Catatumbo lightning did one stop for a few months, from January to March 2010. It was probably due to drought, or maybe the charge ran out. In 1991, a scientist suggested that the phenomenon happens because of cold and warm air currents meeting in the area. Another theory is that the lightning could be due to the presence of uranium in the bedrock. Not all lightning happens inside clouds. There's a rare phenomenon called a dirty thunderstorm. The lightning happens above a volcano. The most famous is in Japan. It erupts almost every day and spits black clouds high into the air. So it's super scary volcano clouds plus lightning. Whoa! Regular lightning happens during a storm when ice crystals bump into each other. In a dirty thunderstorm, bits of volcanic ash collide, create friction, and spark up the sky. In the hottest and one of the driest places on Earth, Africa's Donakil Desert, temperatures often rise above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The -the out-of-this-world landscape has many active volcanoes and geysers that spit out toxic gases like chlorine and sulfur. 
the vibrantly green, electric blue, and yellow waters are all rain and seawater warmed up by magma. One wrong step here, and you'd be gone for good. This happened in June 2009. People in certain areas in Japan left their homes after a heavy downpour, only to find fish, frogs, and tadpoles everywhere. Fields, roads, lawns, and rooftops were littered with these aquatic creatures. One man was shocked to see 13 carp on and around his truck. Apparently, he stopped to count them. No one knows for sure where the bizarre rain came from, but the most popular theory claims that a powerful water spout picked up all these creatures. Then it carried them through the upper atmosphere and dropped the animals on the unsuspecting people below. And now, welcome to Abraham Lake in Canada. It's completely frozen. You step onto the transparent ice and look down at what lies beneath. No fish, just some mysterious frozen bubbles. They look like small clouds frozen in ice, or jellyfish who forgot to pack a winter jacket. There are thousands of these little bubbles made up of methane. But don't try to dig a hole in the ice to touch it. Methane is highly flammable. It's created by methane-producing bacteria that eats leaves, grass, insects, or any other organic stuff that gets into the lake. When the methane touches the frozen water, it turns into tens of thousands of frozen little balls. When the ice melts, they burst open and sizzle. Similar lakes can be found near some shores of the Arctic Ocean. There, the size of the bubbles can reach several times the size of hot air balloons. Beautiful for sure, but not exactly safe. The next shocking lake is in Indonesia, the island of Java. You come to a majestic volcano, overgrown with grass and trees. The volcano seems to be asleep, but smoke is pouring out of it. You climb to the summit. Exhausted, tired, sweaty, you're ready to cool off. Nice work, you made it to the top. You look into the mouth of the volcano. Hmm, no boiling lava, just a beautiful, bright, turquoise lake down there. It looks like an oasis. Perfect time for a refreshing dip. You run down and get ready to jump in. But that's not water, that's acid! Sulfurous gases get into the lake from under the volcano. The lake itself is full of metals. When the gases touch them, they form that beautiful turquoise water. I mean, acid. Better head back to the nearest village, rest, and come back at night when it's cooler. In the dark, the lake seems to glow. Right above it, you see light-filled, exploding little clouds. The sulfurous gases rise out of the lake, combine with the air, and flash bright blue. Still, don't get too close. The sea turns sinister red, and no living being can survive in it. Must be some dark magic. In fact, it's tiny algae that spread uncontrollably, giving the water this specific tint called the red tide. They have toxins that destroy sea mammals, birds, and turtles, as well as creatures that feed on them. For humans, contact with it ends in breathing problems or seafood poisoning. Sometimes even huge ships sink in the open seas for no visible reason. That reason is often the pockets of bubbles that underwater volcanoes produce even while they're sleeping. Those productive magma factories are hidden under 8,500 feet of water. When they wake up, they act just like land volcanoes, and they can cause destructive tsunamis. This tree looks like a bottle. No wonder it's called the bottle tree. It grows in Namibia and attracts many tourists. But don't get too close to the tree because it's one of the most dangerous on Earth. Milky juice flows inside the trunk. It's highly toxic to the human body. On the bright side, though, the trees have beautiful pink-white leaves with a red core. There's a tree growing in Western Australia that was once used as a prison. A cell for criminals existed inside the Boab prison tree for a long time. People were usually kept there temporarily, just for one night. After that, they were taken to their final destination. The prison was built more than 1,500 years ago and has been perfectly preserved to this day. Tourists visiting this place can sneak a peek inside. In Russia, on the shores of the Baltic Sea, there's an enigmatic national park. The Dancing Forest is a place that no scientist has managed to explain so far. The pine trees of the forest are all crooked and twisted into loops and spirals. The forest didn't appear until the early 60s, when the pines were planted in order to make the sand dune in that area more stable. 
One theory is that it's the unstable sand that made the trees twist in such a way. Other theories for the crooked trees are strong winds, or even supernatural powers. Some people say the forest is a place where positive and negative energies meet, twisting the trees. Local legend says that if a person climbs through one of the rings of a tree, it'll add an extra year to this person's life, or they'll be granted a wish. I like that one. Speaking of bizarre trees, and I was, one grows in the region of Piedmont, Italy. There, a cherry tree grows on the top of a mulberry tree. The strange thing is that both trees are perfectly healthy. A continuous storm at Saturn's North Pole has an odd shape, a hexagon. This is probably because of the gradient of the winds. The total length of this cloud pattern is 9,000 miles, which is about 1,200 miles longer than the Earth's diameter. The hexagon has been observed for many years, but it gets even more mysterious because it changes color too. It used to be turquoise, but it has recently shifted to a golden color. The reason for the color change is that the pole gets exposed to sunlight as the seasons change. Now, rain isn't unusual for Oakville, Washington. However, this one still doesn't have any solid scientific explanation. Instead of common raindrops, people watch translucent jelly-like blobs fall from the skies. These blobs covered about 20 square miles. Those who got really close to the rain experience flu-like symptoms. What were the blobs? Researchers claim that the blobs contain human white blood cells. Later tests showed no presence of nuclei. Some people claim the blobs might have been evaporated jellyfish resulting in rain, or maybe even waste from a commercial plane. Walking rocks, also known as sailing rocks, move across the Death Valley National Park in California without any external intervention, leaving long trails in the dirt and sand along their way. Various time-lapse footages of the moving rocks have been taken. Scientists even installed GPS navigators on some of the rocks, and it showed that the rocks move at a considerable speed. Some researchers believe that the movement is due to thin sheets of ice that form overnight at freezing temperatures in the valley, letting the rocks move until it melts during the day. Or there was a Rolling Stones concert. Nah. The Batageka crater in Siberia looks like a doorway to the underworld. It's about a half mile long and over 280 feet deep, but it never stops growing. As it gets deeper, it exposes more underground layers. The layers show what our planet looked like thousands of years ago, as the slumps reveal the used-to-be climates. The crater appeared back in the 60s, and it all started with rapid deforestation. Trees no longer cast shade on the ground, and it got hotter. The permafrost melted, resulting in the crater formation. The throbbing hum in Taos, New Mexico has driven locals wild since the 1990s. The low-frequency hum deprives people of sleep and depletes their energy. Even though scientists have tried to find the source of the hum, they still haven't pinpointed its origin. Different variations of the hum have also been heard in the UK, Australia, Canada, and other areas of the US. Luckily, only about 2% of the world's population can hear it. The hums have been blamed on mechanical devices, multiple disturbances of auditory systems, and even animals. The West Seattle hum, for example, was blamed on toadfish. Fairy rings, also known as elf rings or pixie rings, are mysterious rings of mushrooms that appear in grasslands and forested areas. There's a lot of debate about why these fungi form a nearly perfect circle. Some superstitions claim that fairy dances would burn the ground, causing mushrooms to rapidly grow. In Costa Rica, there's an assortment of about 300 spherical stone balls. Locals call them las bolas, which is simply the balls in English. These stones have an almost perfect round shape. Some of them are huge, weighing up to 16 tons each. They're also made of different materials – gabbro, limestone, and sandstone. They're considered to have been put in straight lines in front of the chief's houses, but there's no precise information of their origin. Some myths claim that these stones originated in Atlantis. Mm. 
If you ever travel to the Mekong River in late October, you have a chance of seeing glowing balls rising from the water and beelining up into the air. Locals call these glowing balls the Naga Fireballs. The size of the lights vary. The reddish balls can be as tiny as a spark and as large as a basketball. There can be dozens to thousands of balls a night. Scientists don't have any solid explanation for why it happens, but it could be due to flammable gases released by the marshy environment. Some superstitious locals are sure it's all because of a giant serpent living in the Mekong. Great balls of fire! In Minnesota, on the north shore of Lake Superior, there's a park known for the Devil's Kettle. This is a waterfall that splits in two. One part of the river continues, while the other part disappears into a hole in the ground. Whatever object you throw into the Devil's Kettle won't reappear. Scientists still haven't fully explained where the water that drops into the hole goes. Devil's Kettle is considered to be unsafe for people because it's nearly impossible to trace the flow. Yeah, not a place to go tubing. Grunions are fish known for their bizarre mating ritual. The females climb out of the water and onto the shore. They dig their tails into the sand in order to lay eggs. The legs stay hidden in the sand, waiting. Ten days later, the high tide comes, washing the newly hatched young to the sea. Scientists still can't give any solid explanation for this way of breeding. People who live in rural central Norway over the Hesdalen Valley can often witness floating lights of white, yellow, and red cross the sky. The lights appear both at day and night, and once back in the 80s, they were spotted 15 to 20 times in a single week. The Hesdalen lights can last just a few seconds, but sometimes they can last more than an hour. The lights move, seeming to float or even sway around. Some scientists believe that the reason for these lights is due to ionized iron dust. Others say it's combustion that includes sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen. Many people claim they're just misidentified aircrafts. Yellowstone Park has a famous boiling lake, but it's not the world's only place of boiling water. Deep in the Amazon, there's the 4-mile Chanay Tempishka River that's always hot. The name means boiled by the sun. Well, it's not exactly boiling, but it can reach 196 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to cook pasta. Ooh, let's try that. The lowest temperature in these waters is about 113 degrees. This river still can't be scientifically explained because it would require close proximity to a volcano for the water to reach such temperatures. However, the closest volcano is 400 miles away. But there could be a fault between the Earth that could explain this phenomenon. In western Venezuela, locals living close to the Catatumbo River aren't afraid of lightning because they see it almost every single night. It starts at around 7 o'clock and doesn't stop until dawn. The everlasting Catatumbo lightning did once stop for a few months, from January to March 2010. It was probably due to drought, or maybe the charge ran out. In 1991, a scientist suggested that the phenomenon happens because of cold and warm air currents meeting in the area. Another theory is that the lightning could be due to the presence of uranium in the bedrock. Speaking of lightning, I got a bolt! Bye! The Boxing Day Tsunami, Indonesia. An undersea earthquake starts in the morning. Its tremors cause a series of tsunami waves. The largest reaches the height of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Unzen Volcano Mega Tsunami A powerful volcanic eruption triggers a landslide from a 4,000-year-old lava dome. It sweeps through the city of Shimabara and reaches the sea, setting off a mega tsunami. The Vajon Dam Mega Tsunami, Italy A landslide drags 9 billion cubic feet of forest, soil, and rock into the lake. A dark wall of water covers the sky over a tiny village at the bottom of the Vajon Dam. Then, with a deafening roar, the wave overtops the edge of the dam, taking out everything in its path. Mount St. Helen Mega Tsunami, USA As the volcano erupts, the upper 1,500 feet of Mount St. Helen collapses into a massive landslide. Part of this avalanche plunges down into nearby Spirit Lake, 
which splashes the lake waters into a series of waves almost as tall as the Eiffel Tower. Alaska's Latuya Bay Tsunami A landslide caused by an earthquake creates a mega wave. It surges over the headland and washes away trees, plants, and soil down to bedrock. Molokai, Hawaii A third of the East Molokai volcano caves in and collapses into the Pacific Ocean. This causes a tsunami the size of the second tallest building in the world, Shanghai Tower. The waves reach Mexico and California. The Yucatan Asteroid Tsunami The asteroid, which is rumored to have wiped out dinosaurs, strikes the Yucatan Peninsula. It creates a mega-tsunami, the largest in Earth's history. The first waves almost twice bigger than the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. Hurricane Mitch Mitch forms in the Western Caribbean Sea. Soon it strengthens to become the eighth most powerful Atlantic hurricane ever. The storm pours four inches of rain per hour for two days in Honduras. It causes terrible mudslides and floods. Hurricane Allen Rare and extremely powerful, the storm is one of the few to reach Category 5, the highest possible. It causes more than $2 billion in damage. The Great Hurricane After tearing down Barbados, the storm moves on. It strips the bark off the trees growing on Martinique and St. Lucia and travels further. This horrific natural disaster lasts for six days. Hurricane Dorian It's the most powerful tropical cyclone to hit the Bahamas. The hurricane flattens most of the structures on the islands and sweeps them into the sea. Hurricane Wilma The storm occurs in the Caribbean Sea near Jamaica and heads to the west. Two days later, it gathers enough power to turn into the most intense hurricane ever recorded in the Atlantic Ocean. Hurricane Patricia A regular storm develops a well-defined eye and turns into a Category 5 hurricane within a mere 24 hours. At one point, it travels faster than a Ferrari moving at its top speed. It makes Patricia the world's most intense tropical cyclone ever recorded. Kamchatka Earthquake It happens in the early morning 80 miles away from the shores of Kamchatka. The earth tremors produce a tsunami. The first two waves are catastrophic, up to 60 feet high. The third one's much weaker. Valparaiso Earthquake, Chile It happens at about 5 a.m. along the boundary of two tectonic plates. The tsunami, triggered by the earthquake, wipes out 620 miles of Chile's coastline. Tohoku Earthquake, Japan The first earth tremors start at a great underwater depth. The earthquake is so strong, it moves Japan's main island. It shifts the planet on its axis by up to 10 inches and increases its rotation speed. The disaster also triggers a tsunami with 133-foot high waves that travel 6 miles inland. Indian Ocean Earthquake, Sumatra A rupture along two tectonic plates sets off an undersea earthquake. It begins at about 8 a.m. near northern Sumatra, Indonesia. It makes the planet vibrate nearly a half inch and sets off earthquakes all over the world up to Alaska. Good Friday Earthquake, Alaska The most powerful earthquake recorded in North America lasts for 4 minutes and 38 seconds. A 600-mile-long crack causes terrible landslides and a 27-foot tsunami. Areas 200 miles away get raised by 30 feet. Other places permanently drop 8 feet. Valdiva, Chile The Great Chilean Earthquake starts in the afternoon and lasts for no less than 10 minutes. The disaster affects an area the size of California. It triggers tsunamis that reach the shore of Hawaii, Japan, the Philippines, Australia, and New Zealand. The average tornado usually lasts less than 10 minutes, but there are exceptions. El Reno Tornado It's considered the world's largest tornado based on width. At its peak, the twister reaches 2.5 miles across. The Perryville Tornado, U.S. It occurs at about 2 a.m., and starts with snapping hardwood trees and breaking down stone constructions. Then the whirlwind becomes stronger. It levels two-story buildings, flips and tosses cars as if they were toys. Bridge Creek Moor Tornado When the twister gets into the town of Bridge Creek, its width is at its peak, one to one and a half miles. 
the wind speed of the tornado reaches more than 300 miles per hour. This natural disaster causes $1 billion in damage. Manitoba, Canada. An outstanding tornado rages for nearly three hours. It breaks tons of trees and utility poles, damages roads and farmhouses, but miraculously misses every town on its path. Tri-State Tornado, U.S. The world's longest-lasting single tornado travels 220 miles through Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. The average tornado's path is usually no longer than 5 miles. Tupelo, Gainesville, U.S. An outbreak that consists of at least 12 single tornadoes wipes out everything on its way. The accompanying rainstorms also trigger severe flash floods that make matters even worse. Valjant Landslide, Italy At 10 p.m., a landslide with a volume of 100 Great Pyramids of Giza breaks off from the top of Monte Toc. It falls into the Valjant Dam Reservoir, producing a tsunami wave taller than the Golden Gate Bridge. Yunnan, China An avalanche of rock, stones, and mud, so big it could fill up Sydney Harbor, forms a dam on the Jinsha River. The Hitta River, Japan Triggered by a rainstorm, 300,000 Olympic swimming pools of debris flows down before getting stopped by another, earlier landslide. Along the way, the landslide sweeps two buses off the road. Peru A rock slide dams the Rio Montanero, a long river running through the center of Peru. The whole process takes no more than 3 minutes, which means the landslide moves at a speed of up to 87 miles per hour. It also leaves a trail of debris 5 miles long. The Usoi Dam, Tajikistan Set off by a magnitude 7.4 earthquake, the rock slide falls into the Murgab River and blocks its flow. That's how the Usoi Dam, one of the tallest in the world, appears. Mount St. Helens, USA At 8.30 a.m., after much buildup, a volcanic vent finally gives way and sets off a catastrophic eruption which makes the entire north side of Mount St. Helens fall away. It's the world's largest recorded landslide. North Bonneville, U.S. In the middle of the 15th century, a great earthquake occurs. An incredible amount of debris rushes down from Table Mountain. It covers more than 5 square miles and blocks the Columbia River with a dam 200 feet high and and 3.5 miles long. Not a lot of people have heard of this mysterious body of water named after famous English explorer Sir Francis Drake. Even though Drake himself never sailed through these waters, one of his ships did pass near this location and discovered a connection between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. That's how the area got named the Drake Passage in 1578. Soon enough, the passage became known for some mysterious disappearances. It got the reputation of being the roughest and most unpredictable stretch of water in the world. It's now known for its strong winds and rough seas with waves that can reach up to 60 feet in height. The passage also has powerful currents with speeds never seen before. Does it sound like a good start to an adventure book? Sure, it doesn't make the place any less real. If you ever decide to travel between the southern tip of South America and the southern tip of the Antarctic Peninsula, you will come across the infamous Drake Passage. We call this place the Drake Passage today, but locals still believe it should be named after Spanish explorer Francisco de Oces. He was a Spanish navigator who, in 1525, led the first known European expedition to navigate the Drake Passage. The trip was part of an attempt of Spain to find a new route to the Spice Islands in the East Indies. Oses and his two ships, the San Lesmes and the Santiago, sailed through the Strait of Magellan and into the Drake Passage, where they encountered treacherous weather and rough seas. Despite the difficulties, they successfully navigated the passage and became the first Europeans known to have done so. However, the expedition failed to find a new trade route, and the crew returned to Spain with no significant discoveries. Some years later, in 1616, another ship captained by Dutch navigator Willem Schouten made one of the most successful voyages through the Drake Passage. Despite the difficulties of navigating the often turbulent seas, eventually, 
the Drake Passage became an important part of international trade routes in the 19th and early 20th centuries. But this dangerous area holds many secrets. The record of one of the most famous events that happened here takes us back to the year 1914. During that time, a British explorer named Shackleton wanted to travel to Antarctica with 27 men split between two ships. Those were named the Endurance and the Aurora. The explorers wanted to check out two routes that reached the continent. But in 1915, the Endurance got stuck in ice while crossing the Drake Passage and was slowly crushed. Shackleton and his crew had to leave the ship and could only gather some personal belongings. The Endurance eventually sank and the crew had to survive on ice for a while. The mission changed from exploring to surviving and only in 1916 all the men were rescued. The Aurora suffered a similar fate. It also got stuck in ice and three men were lost at sea before the rest of the crew was rescued in 1917. For many years, the ship Endurance was thought to have been lost forever. But in 2022, a group of specialists went on a trip to find it. They left from Cape Town, South Africa on February 5th. The leader of the group said it was most likely the most difficult shipwreck search in history. They used special equipment to find the ship under the water and then used a special underwater camera to take a closer look. The members of the team were sure they had found the Endurance because it was in a place where very few ships had ever been. Despite being 10,000 feet underwater, the Endurance didn't look so shabby. It was actually pretty well preserved for a ship that had been underwater for more than 100 years. The explorers were still even able to see the word Endurance written on it. But it's not just ships that have a hard time with the Drake Passage. A plane with 38 people on board seemed to have disappeared over the Drake Passage in 2019, according to the Chilean authorities. It's believed it hit the icy and rough waters of the passage. Rescuers used ships, planes, and satellites to search for the missing plane and its passengers in the area where it had last sent messages. But the harsh conditions of the Drake Passage made the search very difficult. The exact location where the accident had happened was eventually found, but there were no survivors. The Viking Polaris is another of those ships that got damaged in the passage, even though it was designed for tough conditions. It was faster than most ships and more stable because of special equipment that kept it balanced. One night, back in 2022, the waves were indeed big, but the ship seemed to be doing well in the rough weather. But then, on its way back to port in Ushuaia, Argentina, a rogue wave suddenly hit the ship without warning. People on board felt like they had been hit by an iceberg. Rogue waves are much taller than other waves around them, and they're very unpredictable. Scientists still don't know exactly why they occur. When this rogue wave hit the Viking Polaris ship, it immediately broke windows on the second deck. Some people on board were hurt, but thankfully, most of them had been properly trained before boarding the ship and knew what they had to do in case of an emergency. The crew was also very good at helping the passengers. Most of them even claimed later that they would board the ship for the second time, despite such an unexpected experience. The boat eventually made it to the port without suffering further damage. What makes this region so hard to cross, though? For starters, the Drake Passage is a wide and deep area of water. It's about 500 miles wide and has a depth of 15,000 feet. Even the most experienced sailors who cross the passage every year say it can be dangerous, unpredictable, and even scary at times. And that's even considering the modern technologies we have today. The area is a mix of warm and cold temperatures, which can result in ravishing storms. Strong winds from the west push the water from the Pacific Ocean into the passage, creating waves and swells that can reach up to 30 feet or more. If accidents happen here, things can get ugly faster than anywhere else. The Drake Passage is a part of the ocean where the water is very cold and has strong currents. The bottom of the ocean there is also not stable, making it harder to find things like a plane or a ship. These days, we have modern technology that helps us feel safe, even when we're passing through rough seas. However, if you are planning to travel by boat to Antarctica, make sure you're ready for the rough sea in the Drake Passage and for feeling a little uneasy. This can happen even to the most experienced of people when the waters are rough. 
but it's especially tough if it's your first time. Some people bring remedies to avoid feeling sick, like ginger gum or scented wristbands. Others find it helpful to look at the horizon. Test things out to see what works for you. Once you arrive at the Drake Passage, you'll be surprised to see that lots of different animals live there. You can see many types of dolphins, birds, whales, and penguins. The water in the Drake Passage is also good for small animals like plankton, krill, which bigger animals such as whales, penguins, and seals generally have on their daily menus. As you get closer to Antarctica, watch out for the South Shetland Islands. These might be the first pieces of land you'll see. They're also located in the Antarctic Peninsula and were first discovered in 1819 by British explorer William Smith. The South Shetland Islands are home to severe active volcanoes, including Deception Island and Mount Benton. The islands are also where you can find a number of endemic species, including the South Shetland Islands Gen 2 penguin, which is only found on this piece of land. Well, this happened in June 2009. People in certain areas in Japan left their homes after a heavy downpour, only to find fish, frogs, and tadpoles everywhere. Fields, roads, lawns, rooftops were littered with these aquatic creatures. One man was shocked to see 13 carp on and around his truck. Apparently, he stopped to count them. No one knows for sure where the bizarre rain came from. But the most popular theory claims that a powerful water spout picked up all these creatures. Then it carried them through the upper atmosphere and dropped the animals on the unsuspecting people below. Shelf clouds look like something from a sci-fi movie. They form when warm and moist air gets caught in a thunderstorm updraft. These ominous clouds most often mean a storm is coming. Breathtaking rainbow clouds appear on top of cotton-like puffy clouds after thunderstorms. The puffy clouds are low-altitude ones. They usually hover at a height of around 6,000 feet. When the water vapor they contains condenses, the resulting droplets act like prisms. This forms multicolored caps over the clouds. Morning glory clouds are extremely rare. They look like massive tubes stretching across the sky. They can snake for more than 600 miles, sitting relatively low. Most researchers agree that these clouds appear when an updraft squeezes through the cloud. This creates the signature rolling appearance. The cool air at the back of the cloud makes it sink downward. The best, but not the only place to see morning glory, is Australia's Gulf of Carpinteria. If you decide to travel there to see these clouds, choose a period from late September to early November. It was 2012 when the sky turned first ominous dark, then yellow. After that, blue gelatinous balls started to fall to the ground. A man from the UK found these balls outside during a hailstorm. He was walking to his garage when he spotted something unusually bright among the whitish hailstones. When researchers examined this jelly rain, they found out the balls were made from the substance used in diapers or potting soil. It's used to absorb liquid. It's still unclear whether the balls fell from the sky, or maybe the melting ice made a few already existing crystals expand in the blink of an eye. Huge white lumps over your head are called mammatus clouds. They can make you believe the sky is falling. Most clouds form when the air rises into the atmosphere, but not mammatus ones. They appear when moist and cool air goes down and mixes with dry air. The result? Unique puffed rice clouds. By the way, if you spot this phenomenon, bad weather is just around the corner. Oh, mama! Colorful nacreous clouds occur extremely high in the atmosphere. I mean, twice as high as a commercial airplane's cruising altitude. The air at such heights is extremely dry and cold. Ice crystals in nacreous clouds are much smaller than those that form more common clouds. They scatter light in a different way. And this gives the clouds their mother-of-pearl appearance. Blood rain looks more terrifying than any horror movie. But in reality, there's nothing strange or unnatural about this weather phenomenon. People have known about such scarlet-tinted rains since the time of ancient Rome. Sometimes, powerful winds lift red dust into the atmosphere and carry it far, far away. 
to another galaxy. <laughs> In the end, this dust gets mixed with clouds, which colors the rain. By the way, dust from coal mines can make the rain black. Pollen is responsible for yellow rains. And some other kinds of dust can turn the rainwater white. In Australia, it sometimes rains spiders. That's because these creatures can balloon. That's a highly unusual way of traveling. A spider climbs to the very top of a tall tree or shrub. And then it spins several strands of silk. These strands help the spider to be carried away by the wind. It's not easy to spot ballooning. But sometimes, if the weather is especially damp and unpleasant, mass ballooning happens. And then you can't help but pay attention. Millions of spiders set off on a journey to find another place with better conditions. It may seem like it's snowing outside, but no, those are spiders drifting down to the ground. Ever see huge round disks in the sky? Most likely, those were lenticular clouds. They usually form over large and high places, like mountains or hills. When strong winds bump into some barrier, this creates an air wave. The air kind of wraps around the obstacle, and the higher the barrier is, the colder the air that's rising over it becomes. At some point, the moisture it contains turns into water droplets, and they form the unusual clouds. Lenticular clouds can look like waves, a pizza, or even a stack of pancakes. How yummy! Volcanic tornadoes are possibly one of the most terrifying natural phenomena. When a volcano erupts, it spews red-hot rock and ash high into the air. As for solid lava pieces and hot gases, they travel down the volcano slope. When this flow moves down, some of the trapped gases begin to rise and spin at the same time. They get squeezed by the surrounding air, which makes them spin faster and faster. That's how a volcanic tornado gets born. Luckily, this phenomenon has a very short lifespan. On March 19, 2018, the inhabitants of Alabama had to run for their lives. Otherwise, they would have been hit by huge chunks of ice falling from the sky. It was the infamous hailstorm that caused millions of dollars worth of damage. After the hailstorm, the area looked gloomy. Broken shop windows, smashed car windshields, busted billboards, holes in the roofs. At least, researchers got excited when they found a hailstone near the town of Cullman. This softball-sized monster was more than 5 inches across. No wonder it set a new state record. Cylindrical snow donuts occur when a wind gust decides to make a snowball. It starts to roll some snow across a snowy area. If it were a real snowball, it would eventually become too heavy for the wind to move. But the snow donut center is hollowed out. This happens because its inner layer is too thin and is blown away when the donut is formed. This makes it lighter than a snowball, and that's why it also rolls farther. Unfortunately, you just can't go and find snow donuts. They're rare because they need very precise conditions to appear. Moonbows are a much rarer phenomenon than rainbows. They're caused by moonlight rather than direct sunlight and occur only when the moon is near full. Moonbows are dim and often seem to be white, but it's just an illusion. The human eye is just not sensitive enough to catch all the colors. Lightning balls are small, floating spheres of light. They can be orange, yellow, or even red. Sometimes, lightning balls descend from the sky. In other cases, they appear out of nowhere, hovering several feet above the ground. They don't emit any heat or produce very little sound. Lightning balls can bounce off objects. If they come across something electrical, like a TV, they usually disappear with a quiet pop, leaving behind the smell of sulfur. But lightning balls can also start fires or explode. Scientists believe lightning balls might be connected with thunderstorms, but there's no solid proof yet. Fog bows are almost white, pale blue on the inside, and faint red on the outside. You have higher chances of seeing a fog bow over the cold sea or ocean when warm air comes into contact with much colder air. This phenomenon also occurs when the sun is bright, and the fog is thin enough for the light to get through. Pele's hair is thin lava threads. They look golden and pretty, but don't even think about picking them up. Yeah, they can harm you. 
The wind sometimes catches small droplets of lava coming from active volcanoes. These droplets get carried miles away from the vent. They get stretched into super-thin glass wires, also called hair lava. Some strands can be as long as 6 feet. In March 2018, those who looked up in the sky in northern Nevada saw one of the rarest and most bizarre clouds ever. It was a horseshoe cloud. Such a vortex happens when a flat cloud travels over a column of warm, rising air. This air not only gives the cloud its impressive shape, but also adds some spin to its movement. But you've got to be quick! Horseshoe clouds are very fleeting and usually last for only several minutes. Frost flowers bloom on young sea ice in the Arctic Ocean or on thin lake ice. They're fragile and delicate ice crystals. These structures grow during temperature changes. They draw moisture from the ice surface and rise, capturing bacteria and salt. You can find frost flowers in Antarctica, too. But wherever these crystals grow, people know disappointingly very little about them. Still, they're awfully pretty. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share